This is the Sea Eagle Tandem Kayak. It is the Razor Light 473. We've had it now for two years, mostly using it during the summertime, and we're gonna go over how it's held up. It comes with a nice carrying tote. It is does have a backpack strap. After two years, one strap is finally starting to pull away. We have managed to lose a buckle. One time when we were grabbing it by these sides here, it seems did start ripping on the strap. But overall, it's been a pretty great bag, pretty durable. When you do pick it up, make sure you use the backpack straps because the side ones are meant to just cinch it tight. There are some mesh holes in the bottom to help drain out some of the excess water. The siding here has that mesh, which do have a few snags. Let's get it out of the bag. It's been in storage for the last five months, so it's hopefully we got all that water out. Before we unfold it, we, let's look at the nose. This is the hard plastic. It has some dinks out of it where we've hit rock. So this is the back end. This is where the fin will go in at. Okay, so here is the front of the, the boat where we have some more scrapes. So when we do, do give it a good scrub down, we use the magic eraser and that gets rid of these marks pretty well. Huh? Pretty good, don't see any mold. Needs a, definitely a scrub down. There are three valves in the back of the boat. They are pretty straightforward to use. You press down and turn. You haven't had any breakage in them, no leaking. And before you put any air in, you wanna make sure you put your foot pedals in first. Cause once there's air in it, they're impossible to do. The front and the back of the boat have these nice handles. They've held up really well, no holes. They have to support quite a bit of weight. So when you're loading up the kayak and walking down to the water, you're able to easily carry it down. There's four D rings for the seats to hook onto. No wear and tear at all that we can see. Seats have held up well. The uh, cushion is still intact. I mean, I can still only go about an hour and a half, but still cushiony, no tears. These straps are pretty heavy duty. Nice um, buckles for at, uh, clipping onto the D-ring. All the seams seem to be sewed in still really well. Overall, they've held up really great. One nice thing about these seats is they have this uh, pouch in the back that we actually use to store our pedals in it. And in the other seat, we store the fin. It doesn't quite fit, but it's a good place to have so it doesn't get lost. We have had some battle damage on the fin. It was hitting some rocks tip right here is probably the, the worst of it. We've actually ran aground a few times on some sand banks going down the stream that connects to the ocean and it has not come off yet. So it's held up really well. Rod, foot pedal. They have a spot in the back of it where you can snap them in and st for storage. Unfortunately, that's one thing that has broken. Uh, the tips to keep it in have broken off. Not super important though, because as long as you keep them in the same area, it's fine, they don't have to be snapped together. These pedals are great, but problematic because they are very difficult to get in. Even though they are a pain to get in, they are super nice. The uh, part that they go into, if the boat's a little bit warmer, is they're easy to bend. So the grooves where the pedal actually sits in, they're all intact, no broken bits. So it does come with this pump, this plastic, um, it did fall over once and broke off the, the gauge cover. It's got a nice crack in it, but it still works fine. The hose can be detached so you can store it separately. Let's talk about paddles. We've only had one issue where the sleeve has come unglued from one of the paddles. So we just need to toss some glue down in there and get it stuck in there again. The paddles have seen their fair share of river bottoms, it hits a few rocks, so not too bad battle damage wise, but if we could do it over again, we definitely would get the carbon fiber paddles, pay that little extra bit because after an hour or two on the boat, they can get a little bit heavy. Now that the boat's flipped over, let's look and see how the bottom is held up. Um, there's a few little chips. Hasn't actually gone all the way through, but you can see the next layer underneath it. There's a couple little bit of scrapes along the edge where we've hit rocks, unfortunately. And it looks like the most of the damage looks towards the back end. There's a pretty big one right there. On the back of the boat, we have our two drain plugs. As you can see, there is some scrapes on there, but they've held up well. They're um, easy to screw in. You just wanna make sure that when you 
get ready to go in the water, they are screwed in tight. The two options for the fin channel, the fin or not the fin. It's pretty easy to slide in. It's a tight fit, but the um, attachment that you use to lock the fin in, it's doing well. There's no worries of it coming undone. Um, you have to do the press down the button to unlock it. When the fin's in, you go straight. When it's out, the boat goes where it wants to go. One of the best parts about this is that it can be easily packed up and fit into a car. How often do you see a tiny little car pull out a giant tandem kayak? Would we buy this again? Yes. Do we love it? Yes. Do we get a lot of questions when we're out on the water? Yes, because it looks like it's a hard shell, but it's actually not. You can check out the video of our initial review of the boat right here. And if you want to find out more about the Sea Eagle, there's links in the description below. And if you want to find out more about us, we're at ExploreTrekAdventure.com. See you next time. Bye.